and another great day in the neighborhood. All right, time for a Halloween odyssey. Hey, why not? So, let's do it. We begin today's drive on York Road. Back when roads were named after where they went. Made life a lot easier, I guess, doing it that way. Now we're coming into Towson. The former Ma and Pa stop. In fact, up ahead, past the intersection, there was a trestle carrying the track over the road. The trestle would have crossed right here. In fact, one of the abutments to the trestle still left over there. Yep, the former Ma and Pa locality. I guess you could call this place the county seat of Baltimore County. Anyway, up here, the modern day York Road bears to the left. We're gonna take the original York Road after this here annoying circle. If I can get around to it here somehow. Yeah, I believe I can, here we go. This was the original York Road system, part of it, but now this is called Delaney Valley Road. Now about 1.05 p.m. as we begin. Didn't go enough miles to make it worth reporting yet. As mentioned, this was once part of the original York Road system. But eventually we'll be back on the modern day York Road, modern day route. Now on the old York Road system. As I said, the original route. And up here, the curve formerly known as Dead Man's. But about 40 years ago got realigned. Now it's not so dead. I guess it came back alive. Up ahead here we bear left. Actually almost straight ahead to keep on the original route, which is right there. Where's the old York Road? Oops, stop sign. Back at you. They call this Sunnybrook Road, but it was part of the Old York Road system. And up around the bend, the Old York Road bore off again to the right. Now it's a neighborhood street, I guess, or something. Could be there or the driveway up here. But it doesn't matter because there's a section of it that's been cut off. So I'm gonna detour this way. Let's get to the cut off section. Confusing, yeah, to me too. Or go this way rather to where it resumes again. That's what I should have said. What's happening? Happy Halloween! Whatever one says on this day. And appear turning left to get back on the old York Road system. Then it's even called that. Again, makes things easier. At least from this point back to the modern day York Road, there are no more missing parts, so no more detours to keep on the route. Got some bright sun out there now. Temps in the mid 60s. At this here stop sign is Manor Road, which we take for about half a mile where Old York picks up again. The 
right there on the right. A one-time bike riding route for us. We covered a lot of miles on our bikes out here. And up ahead, York, Old York bears to the right, and I'll bear with it. We park our car here in the parking lot, then unload our bikes and ride. We've come this way too on our bikes. And up ahead, Old York bears right, and as I said, we're going to bear with it. We've been bearing with it. it. Might be shorter if I'd have borne to the left. But this way is the original route. Yep. Originality counts. But still, with well, this one time roundabout routing, must have taken forever to get to York. But now, even the modern-day York Road doesn't carry much traffic. No thanks to Interstate 83, anyway. Here at the stop sign, we approach Route 24, which is also part of the York Road, Old York Road system, for about three miles in that direction, which we're going to take, obviously. And the cool building there Art Deco. Good old Art Deco. How's he doing these days? They brought you this way before, on the way to Muddy Creek Forks in Pennsylvania, to check the Mont Pa out. We're not staying on this route though, obviously. And through those trees, one more tavern, where George W. once slept. Ah, uh, that's Washington, not the other George W. I guess he slapped around. And they call this part of the road Norrisville Road. But a bit of ways up, Old York picks up again. In fact, up around the bend, I believe it picks up. Yep, this is a rip-off these days. And again here, bearing left to keep on the bridge of the Old York Road. Yeah, As the song says, turn, turn, turn. To everything, there is a season. And again, they, they call this Old York Road at this point one more time. Still, must have taken forever to get to York over this route. It's cloudy out there again, but it looks neat. It clouded up again. We're supposed to get more sun though. Looks like we're about to get a tornado and get swept to Oz, or something like that. Whoever we get swept to. And up here, the modern day York Road. The current route. I'm not counting Interstate 83, that is. Turning right to go north, continue north. Route 45. This is now Maryland Route 45, but originally it was, let's check them out. Where was I? Oh yeah. <laughs> Used to be Route 111 before the coming of 83, US 111, now Maryland 45. Not passing through Maryland Line. They call it Maryland Line 
because it's south of the Pennsylvania line. Good reason. And up Brenda Bend is the Maryland Line, aka the Mason Dixon. As of right up here, or north of the border. Yep, out of state and out of mind. In Pennsylvania, this road has no number, but all maps do show it as. U.S. 111. As far as Harrisburg, where it connects to modern day U.S. 11, the main U.S. 11. 111 is three digits. It's a spur of a two digit road. That's how the numbering system works. And on the right, a frog pond I used to frequent used to frequent. And also here in PA, this road's called Susquehanna Trail. But entering York, it becomes Baltimore Street. Again, makes things easy that way. Now passing through a small locality, called Hungerford. A51 West takes you to New Freedom, where the trains are running again. But that's another trip. But, speaking of trains, up here we cross the Georgetown Railroad. And again, I've been cut off, caught on chip, SD chip, whatever. I mean, there's a Sword Sound station there. I'm going to do have a ride on the train posted on YouTube for those who desire. And now we're entering Shrewsbury. It must have rained here. Got a wet road. Literally. I think we just missed something. Again, literally. We'll go there again. But definitely got a soggy road. Soggy as a froggy. It's now 2.09 p.m. And we've come 36 and a half miles over the original route. And some of you may recall that brought you this way before too on other odysseys. But after Harrisburg, we're going to vary the route a bit. Do a variation on a theme. Now picking up a few raindrops on the windshield. Only calling for a couple of drops today though. No major downpour. Not raining anymore, but still we're supposed to get some sun later on. Not coming into Loganville. And departing Loganville. Or so I thought. Now passing through Jacobus.
But here's some more of it. But apparently we're about to depart it. Old bridge there. I guess part of the original grade, right there coming back out. Interesting. But anyway, we're now entering York. 83 connector right there. York, PA. Founded 1741. And the downtown area. Downtown York. Up here across the former US 30. East West US 30. Now relocated around the town. At least again, got some sun out there. You got sunny again. So in that case, have a look at the Northern Central's York Station one more time. There you go. Trains stopped here up until 1971 when Amtrak took over and changed all the routes. Yep, until 71. Here's how folks got from Baltimore to York. That way is northbound on the timetable, but now facing almost due east. It does bend to the north about a quarter mile down. But way in the distance, the former tower that once controlled movements between the Northern Central and the Ma and Pa. The two meet down there, right by that interlocking tower. And back on the road. Gone about 50 miles so far. On a bumpy road. Now in a place called North York. It's supposed to be separate from York. I guess it is. But both are kind of attached to each other. If you look on the map. Eighty-three business routes. Those green signs you don't see very often. Yep, this is the beeswax route. Up here, turning left again to keep on the original York Road system. Straight takes you somewhere else. I guess. <laughs> but if you're going from Baltimore to Harrisburg, you know, 50, 60 years ago, here's your route. traffic light here. The one thing was lolling if you could run to the McDonald's, get something to eat, then come back and still make the light. And that the light is the modern day US 30. West to the left, east to the right. At the time the McDonald's was on this side, that's the old McDonald's building there, Bob's Spas. But this light would take so long you could run up there get a burger and fries, and still make the light. And I'm finally out of both Yorks. The regular York and North York. Heading back into the spaces. Well, sort of. But again, a bit of a wet road here. I could probably missed something. And 
what appears to be a distant mountain. Actually, just a low ridge. Look at the original route ran that way. Original route. But cut apart by I-83. So I gotta go this way to cross over 83. And they're not pit stop time quite yet. Hmm. Amazon truck. They have good stuff, but I can't stand their logo. The truck's gone. Now crossing over 83. My return route. The old one would have come out of the side there. Where those poles are. And now we're back on it. Now we're entering Strinestown. And as I said before, I knew one of the Strines this place got named after. Yep, I know a Strine. Or well, used to, back in the 80s. Just a small hamlet. Somebody once asked me on YouTube, what's a hamlet? I said, little pig, what do you think? Come on, get with it. Cool architecture. But now we're leaving it, departing Strinestown. Remember when that place is still open. Now, 3.05 p.m. And we've come 60 miles. Am I coming into Newberry Town? I can bearing a half left here to keep on the original route. Now bearing right to keep on the original route. Yep. And now through the woods, where there's some change to the leaves, I was hoping for more. After all, it is Halloween. Now crossing the bridge into New Cumberland. And downtown area here. But at least the sun's back out. Good. That's what they were calling for. Now out of the downtown area. Got some nice homes here. Most of which are well kept up. But these are the kinds of localities that I grew up in way back when. Now passing through Lemoyne. And over the bridge we pick up US-11 northbound. Up here is where US-111 would have come with an official end, meeting the main route, the main route 11. If the one-time end right here of the US-111, no longer in existence. Up ahead an old pen line, no longer in use. But there is one that is. Oh, well, that one's still in use. It's another one that isn't. That one. 
difference I'm passing down there and over here. Norfolk Southern would have to be. Well, stop to the light. Might as well get a run by. And to our right, the Susquehanna. US 15 also follows this road. Along with 11. Pumpkin Fest, anyone? Through those trees is the Norfolk Southern Yard, but hard to get from here. Formerly the Penn Yard, whatever. Penn, then Penn Central, then Conrail. In a visual succession. More of it there. There you have it. Your Norfolk Southern fix. We're not far from Rockville Bridge right now. I'll try and access it. Now to wind through some side roads to get to Rockville Bridge. A tricky getting to Rockville Bridge, but should be worth it. Almost there. But to the left, once again, Norfolk Southern. A lot of hoppers. Hey, that's what that's what a frog likes. Hoppers. Never mind. Rockville Bridge passing beneath it. I'll see if I can stop and show more of it. And this promised Rockville Bridge. Rockville proper is across the water there, across Susquehanna, at the base of a mountain. But over here, a flooded driveway. Apparently the Susquehanna is above flood stage right now. Can't drive down there right now, can we? And something else I've shown you before, an old bypass tunnel for the Rockville Bridge interchange. Well, two tunnels actually. But right behind me, it's totally grown over, and you can't tell there was ever a track there. But there are historic maps that, that do show a track here, obviously. And back on the road again. And entering a place called Marydale. And some Marydalers, or whatever they're called. Happy Halloween! Map at the cross beneath Norfolk Southern. I get back to the main road somehow. Which is my bridge. That's where the main road is. I'll figure something out. Now that would be the main route again. Roots living in 15. But apparently across the way, 
one-time train station. Or at least it sure looks like one. Oh, I'm just gonna make a left turn here. Hold on. I gotta continue left. And back north on routes 11 and 15. Obviously, I hope. Gonna try and find the Statue of Liberty. And there she is, Miss Liberty herself. Standing in the water, facing south. Well, southeast actually. And behind it, the Northern Central. But there she is, Miss Liberty herself. As the expression goes, give me her or give me death. So there's your Statue of Liberty. I believe the original one fell back in the 90s and got replaced by a bigger one. I think I read that somewhere. I'm not coming into Cove, PA. Yep, that's what it's called. All right, let's see what lies ahead. But once again, it's clouded up. Over there some places, Dun Cannon. We have four lanes at this point. But here getting off to recross the Susquehanna. The two routes follow this part of the road, US 22 and 322. And here we're crossing the Susquehanna. But up here, getting off again. 325 East, Mountain Road, obviously I hope. And here it is, PA325, I guess eastbound. It's now 4.34 PM. And we've come almost 99 miles. A rather peaceful road, for the most part. But once again, got another first time route here. At least for us, it's first time. Maybe for you too. on this road for quite some time now, but haven't passed any other roads yet, no intersections yet. I'm looking for Gold Mine Road, which you've seen before, but, but this time we go another direction on it. A bit later, but still didn't pass any other roads.
We are still looking for my road. Here it is a couple of days later. We're still on the same road. Or it seems that long anyway. I haven't cut anything in a long time. Well, we're out of the woods now. Maybe we're coming to something. We'll get some stuff along here now. They finally came to some stuff. How about that? Now to find my road. But again, emptiness. Limits 45. I'm going to 50. Just got passed. You have a friend in Pennsylvania. I wish I did. Now we came to a clearing of some kind. Mountains. They don't call this mountain road for nothing. Yep. First I was a beach boy. Now I'm a mountain man. But again, the sun's trying to pop out, or so it seems. We have a stop sign. See what road this is. Looks like three words, Gold Mine Road, and it is, found my road. There we go. Now south on gold mine. Have to do some mountain climbing, apparently. We've been on this road before, but coming the other way. Well, here, here's this way. And the usual hairpins. As per usual. We've got a real one there. And maybe one more. Yep, typical mountain driving. Trucks reduce gear. That tells you something. Got a steep downgrade. In fact, I dropped it down a gear to make it easy to brake. My version of dynamic braking. You know, like trains have. Hope the sun's out again. Hope it stays out. Well, at least till sunset. And again, more sharp curves. But <laughs> coming to Route 443, which will take east for a bit. But at least again, it's not a nice day. And again, one more first time road here. First time for us.
really sunny around here, looking for some cool lighting. Anyway, now 5.23 p.m. And so far we've come 136 miles. Interesting lighting, for sure. Again, another hamlet here of some kind. But now trying to find a certain other road. But again, first time this way on this part of the road. Now south on PA 648. And this could be Frystown. They still got the sharp turns. Once again, you guessed it, hairpins. And again on a different road for the first time. Don't know if I'm going the right way, but I'll find out somehow. Now on Interstate 78. He's bound for a bit. Rather westbound. Excuse me. Guess I'm getting old. Up here we merge with Interstate 81 southbound. And 78 comes to an end. And a bright sun too. I let the sun go behind the cloud so I can see again. I'm not getting off here to check something out. And now we're on PA 934, heading north. And now we've entered Fort Indian Town Gap. I believe an army installation. And hopefully, civilians are welcome. Or I'm in trouble. Artillery. Making your way across the army base now. Don't forget to make my way across one of these. I'm trying to find a certain street. Let me try down here. Interesting sunset there. But we're trying to find a road named after Dolly's grandfather on this base. And one of these side streets has Dolly's grandfather's name on it, but no street signs tell us which one. Her grandfather got honored by the army. He must have been good. Yeah. We have a cool airplane up there, though.
I'll have to come back one day and try again. I think part of the problem is I approach this base from the wrong direction. But I have one more idea up my sleeve. I finally found Dolly's grandfather's road. Shootin Road. Her grandfather's last name and her mom's maiden name. You have history in the Shooting family. And there's one of the Shooting offsprings right there. Thank you. Yes, this is it. And the rest of the street. Looking a bit deserted right now. A bit forlorn. Good word. Dolly's grandfather's road. This is it. Yep. Take your pictures while you're here. It's your family history. Better get back on the freeway, I guess. Now departing the Shooting Road area. We've come 161 miles so far. But now we're starting for the way back. Now about 6.13 p.m. So I guess we'll start back to Baltimore. Big deal. Yes, my lady has some family history back there. All I have is Bullfrog Road in Maryland. That's all I've got. Well, that's something. And up here, back on I-81 southbound, which will take us to I-83 southbound. I guess that makes sense. We're starting to lose light, but at least the sun is out of my face. Got a cool cloud there, though. And some more. Action. Yep. Where the action is. 83 South. Yeah, we're going that way. I guess you figured out by now. And now on to 83 South. All right. Now we're bypassing the Harrisburg area. And again facing west, as is obvious. But we will soon curve to the south. And again crossing the Susquehanna. There we bend to the south. After the interchange. And bending to the south now. We go back south bend, whatever. That's a city, isn't it? Alright. We be lying back from here. Although we're back on I-83, on I-83, whatever, for a while this road even carried the number US-111 before its completion. After they completed this road, they made it 83 and defunct it 111. Hope I got that right. From this point until York was the first section of this road ever opened and bore the number 111 for a while. So the whole road got completed and became 83. And again, hope I got that right. 
I think I did. It's now about 6.50 p.m. and 47.2 miles from Fort Indian Town Camp. Also, when this road was built, there wasn't limited access yet. It was still direct access. I occasionally see driveways coming out to this road, one now blocked off by a fence, and even homes and businesses facing this road, proving it began as a regular road without limited access before interstate standards. Well, but for New York, as I said, was part of former US 111. New York. The road used to run down that way where they're exiting before they fixed this part of it here and back onto the original route that we saw earlier before this was done. Yeah, get over here. Plenty of room. On the trailer, you forgot something. It's now 7.06 p.m. as we depart the York area. Around 54 miles from Indian Town Gap. Our total mileage, 216 miles. And here in the Shrewsbury area, where we passed earlier on the original route, still construction going on here been like four or five years now. In fact, somebody on YouTube once told me it'll take a while, and they're still doing it. There's stuff up there. Or maybe they're about done. And up around this here bend, we cross back into Maryland. But we're not home quite yet. We still have miles to go. A few anyway. But as of now, we're back in our home state. Try to get the sign there. Welcoming us home. Thank you. How far to our beltway? I-695. 22 miles, 23 minutes. That's nice of them to let us know. Another seldom used way station, like the ones on Interstate 70. But interesting how this road was built in a few pieces, then put together, so to speak. Now here in Maryland, it was built to interstate standards right from the start, but not in Pennsylvania. And the whole thing opened entirely in 1958. We have a police officer up there, but folks are still speeding. I don't get it. What are the cops afraid of? some construction here again as we get back into suburbia somewhere around here we're about to pick up Baltimore's Beltway 695 now if Beltway is a circle route how can it be east, west, north and south must be a square circle a square circle well, look at it this way. At least they don't cut corners. Ah, oh, never mind, that didn't work. Now approaching your exit from part of the world. But up there in the ridge, the Malapai Railroad once ran across here. Way back, obviously. Yeah, back on surface and streets. But as I keep saying, 
off those feet and surfaces. Watch out, whatever. That's what I call scratching the surface. Maybe it's Halloween. Everybody's in a spooky mood. And driving as such. Anyway, suburbia on Halloween Sunday. And up here we're entering Baltimore City. As Buddy Holly once said, oh boy. Halloween night in Baltimore. Ah, eh, whatever. All right, back to the hood. And back in the hood, around 8 p.m. Had a great ride today. Total distance, about 259 miles and about 80 from Fort Indian Town Gap. Once again, your bullfrog says, thank you very much for the privilege of your time. And also, as a famous rock band once said, the love you take is equal to the love you make. I couldn't have said it better. Halloween drive just for you. <laughs> 